Disclaimer. This study is a compilation of both empirical and anecdotal evidence on society's opinions about drug culture. The term drug in this presentation will be looked at through the lens of how the Oxford Dictionary explains it. A medicine or other substance which has physiological effects when ingested or otherwise introduced into the body. This is not the only definition on what a drug is that affects how society uses or treats them. This is just the most general definition I could find. I am not a doctor. This research is only meant to show the differences in how societies around the world approach the positive and negative connotations revolving drugs and their uses. Much of our American world has been shrouded in a murky glow of fear-based learning and uncertainty regarding the perspectives related to drugs and their role in society. We've heard the coined term a million times. The war on drugs, it's being lost, it's tearing our communities apart. But what does everyone mean when they so freely talk about this seemingly invisible war? What is being lost exactly? And what do we have to gain through conversations about this defeat? I intend to answer these questions, but before we look at the United States, let's take a look at how a few other countries deal with drugs in their societies. Let's go back to the 1990s, in a country called Portugal. According to an article written by BePortugal.com, over 1% of the population was addicted to heroin. And with this drug use, brought the highest rate of HIV infections in all of Europe. Another study from Statista.com claims that Portugal's yearly drug rates were over 369 overdose deaths, 907 new HIV diagnoses due to injecting, and over 3,863 individuals incarcerated because of drug-related charges in the 1990s and early 2000s. Fast forward to 2001 and the implementation of the Portugal Drug Policy, decriminalizing consumption, acquisition, and possession of drugs. Plainly put, they decriminalized all drugs with one document in a single day. And let's be clear. Decriminalizing drugs is not the same as legalizing drugs. Pulled from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, decriminalizing, to remove or reduce the criminal classification or status of drugs, or to repeal a strict ban on drugs while keeping under some form of regulation. Legalizing, to make drugs legal, or to give legal validity or sanction to drugs, meaning that there would be no form of repercussion for having or distributing drugs. So. Their intention is not to say that people do not need some form of governmental intervention in regards to their drug use. They just changed the federal perspective from looking at drug users as criminals to now viewing certain drug use as a mental and physical health issue. Instead of pouring money and resources into fear-based teachings and holding drug users in prisons, they began to fund programs to help those with chronic drug use issues from a medical perspective. At the time, this was a radical idea to implement in an otherwise first world country. And up to where we are now, it seems like it's actually been working. Looking at our graph from before, in 2016 and 2017, yearly drug rates were 30 overdose deaths, 18 HIV diagnoses due to injecting, and 1,140 people incarcerated because of drug-related charges. This massive change in numbers really doesn't lie. An article written by the Washington Post brings up a good point. They state that synthetic drugs, or knockoff designer drugs, are usually the chemicals that tend to put a different strain on the human body. A new and barely tested drug made in a makeshift chemistry lab has a higher chance of killing someone than a drug that has been tested and has been around for far longer. So the external potential Portugal theory is why would drug users go for knockoff copycat designer drugs when they could just get the real thing instead? Perhaps a clean environment and clean drugs are to thank for the lower numbers? But would the same perspective change work in other societies around the world? Let's take a look at a country that has some of the most strict laws regarding drugs. But before that, some honorable mentions include South Korea for jailing and reprimanding the internet sensation Psy, formerly famous for his song Gangnam Style for his marijuana use. Singapore for their old-fashioned approach on drug possession death penalty and the implementation of caning those who are caught with drugs. And my last honorable mention wouldn't be complete without China. A dispute in the late 19th century, literally named the Opium Wars, gave way to a society of heavy drug use and the eventual prohibition as well as harsh punishments for drug use. The country that I found to have the most strict drug laws would have to be Malaysia. 
According to an article written by USA Today, getting fined for the use or distribution of any illicit drugs will result in heavy fines, prison time, or importation. The amount of drugs needed to be considered a drug trafficker is very low when compared to many other countries. For example, having only 7 ounces of marijuana to be in this trafficking category when compared to the US who says that 50 pounds or more is drug trafficking, you kind of begin to realize that the leniency for large federal charges is really not there. So going back to the US, we see such different perspectives throughout our whole society. The discontinued and disproven D.A.R.E. program churned fear-based tactics into children's classrooms for decades. Each state has a completely different take on marijuana laws. Oregon literally just passed a law that will decriminalize most illicit psychedelics, downers, and stimulants in 2021. Oregon's reasoning? Less focus on punishment and more opportunities for drug users to get addiction screenings from professionals. The violation for possessing a small amount of these newly decriminalized drugs will result in a small ticket and actually an opportunity to talk to an addictions counselor. Moving back to our questions we asked at the beginning, what does everyone mean when they talk about losing the war on drugs? Depending on a person's culture, this could mean a few different things. The stigma of drug culture being aggressive. According to your culture, you may believe that some illicit drugs may make your body impure. I myself have lost a few friends from drug overdoses in my younger years. So death may be a huge driving factor in why someone feels we are losing this war. There are many other opinions that may affect how someone would answer this question. But when it comes down to it, there is one common solution that I can see. Education. Making sure kids and adults have the information and resources they need to make their own accurate decisions from a young age. Hiding information and resources from a child or adult because they are young or come from a different culture is giving the world permission to teach them how to interact with these situations in a non-controlled environment. Although a parent or teacher might think they are saving them from a tainted part of the world, that's really just not true. Humans have been experimenting with drugs since the beginning of our human evolution, and it would be silly to deny that most cultures heavily rely on external chemicals entering our bodies. Whether it's a spiritual or worldly escape, certain drugs have taught us lessons we can't possibly have learned without an external perspective change. I am constantly saying the more conversations we have about topics that make us uncomfortable, the quicker we begin to understand how this world and other humans function. The only thing we have to lose by educating our population on the dangers of misinformation is the amount of fear we have built up in our society. We will in turn gain new generations of humans who may be more inclined to talk about the internal issues they deal with. Instead of fearing for their freedom due to the self-harm they've been inflicting on themselves through tactics deemed illegal to the state, we could provide learning opportunities and safe environments to experience themselves. There is truly a long road ahead of us in respect to this war that must not be named, but I'll leave the logistics to the scientists. There are times that I find myself falling for the humans of this world To be pulled from side to side as if I'm a piece of clay meant for molding The agenda of this hive of minds we sometimes find comfort inside But I am not I, and you are no more you than me As this illusion passes me by, I've come to know there is only so much that we can see Terribly 
sorry. I can't seem to remember where I placed my agenda. Hmm. Let me know if you want me to continue this War That Must Not Be Named series. Thanks for watching.